So recently I was working on networking in Hazel and uh, you know, a, a lot of that project involved me using Linux because the plan was to eventually use a Linux server to actually run the server side of multiplayer. So this basically just meant that I had to get the entire Hazel engine compiling and, and working on Linux. That was quite the journey. Not to mention the headless build that we needed to be able to actually run the game server on a Linux VPS. So that whole project meant that I had to use terminals a lot more than I usually would have. And what does that experience consist of? A lot of Googling, asking AI, ChatGPT, you know, how to do this on Linux. And lots of reading, lots of like running a command with dash dash help and then just seeing like, how do you even use this? Which is fine. I mean, it's just the life of a programmer and you'd probably expect me to be learning a lot, except because like this isn't like a daily occurrence of me just chilling in the terminal all day, every day, I tend to forget things very, very quickly. I mean, I kid you not, like the way that this usually goes is I'll work on a project, I'll learn a whole bunch of like sweet Linux commands, then like a month or two will pass and then I'm almost back in the beginning, unless I take notes. Like a lot of the time I'll actually, I'll have like Notion open and I'll just be taking notes while I'm while I'm actually doing whatever it is I'm doing. Like I'll be pasting in commands that I'm running, explaining them, cause I know that I'm gonna wanna look back on that and see how to do things again. So this is exactly where like the idea of an AI terminal comes in. And I actually think it's, it's kind of a, a great idea. And that's exactly what Warp does. Warp is an intelligent terminal that is now available on all platforms, including Windows as of today. This video is sponsored by Warp. So first of all, yes, it's pretty. They've got a number of themes that you can try out that actually come packaged with it, as well as, of course, getting themes from the internet. From here, it can just be a pretty functional basic terminal if you want it to. You've obviously got tabs and the ability to like split different windows, use a, a wide variety of different terminals as well. But the core experience here centers around something called agent mode. Basically kind of like Vim with its insert mode, there are two main states of this terminal and you go between them by pressing control I. There's a regular terminal mode that just lets you use the terminal normally, run normal commands. And then there's this agent mode, which allows you to use AI to help you with whatever. And that's of course where the whole natural language thing comes in as well. It's super useful for crafting specific commands in a natural language sense. So for example, here I can ask it to show me like a specific set of git commits from a specific time period. You can see how it comes up with the actual git command for me and shows it to me, and then it can run it for me. And when it does run it, you can see that it doesn't just give me the raw output of that command. It actually uses AI to summarize it for me and present it to me nicely. You can then continue having a conversation with it with that particular context in mind. So I can expand my query to say November or even just expand my search to cover all branches. Again, interacting with it in a very human way. Now, if I had to put together that git command myself from scratch, I mean, to be completely honest, these days I'd probably just open up ChatGPT and I'd be like, how do I get git commits for a particular month, for example? Otherwise just Googling it and then winding up like on Stack Overflow or something and then trying to adapt that, it just, that would take like several minutes at least. Now, before we dive in and start taking a look at Warp, let me just cover some things that you should definitely be aware of. Privacy. You're using a terminal to communicate with LLMs such as ChatGPT or Claude to help you out. Warp will also optionally collect telemetry if you let it. There are some things you can do to tighten security, such as this secret redaction setting or the OpenAI zero data retention policy that they have in their enterprise plan. But just be aware that if you're dealing with sensitive data inside your terminal, then this might not be something that you would be comfortable with especially because it's closed source. Also, as you'd probably expect, there are going to be usage limits when it comes to your usage of AI, depending on your plan. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at Warp. So Warp on Windows is now officially out. So just go to warp.dev, link will be in the description below. They've got many plans, including a free one. So feel free to give it a try. So now let's take a deeper look at how one might use Warp to help them when programming. Let's use it to help us set up a brand new C++ project. We'll get it to compile it for us, use Git, maybe use CMake as well, and even fix some compilation errors. We've got a blank directory here. Let's switch to agent mode and ask it to make a file for us. Once I've allowed it to read files, it's gone ahead and made this main.cpp file with even some C++ code in there ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to modify that file to just add hello world to it, just so we have a basic program. Wait a minute, what's this? Using namespace std? 
No, 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 no. That's not how we do things around here. <sighs> okay, that's much better. Okay, so now we need to get this compiled. So let's just see if I have GCC installed. No? Okay, maybe Clang? No. Nah. Okay, we'll just use MSVC. I think it's cool here that it knows that it needs to set up the actual environment first. So it's gonna actually locate my Visual Studio installation and then run this VC VARS all batch file. And you can see the result is it's compiled successfully. Let's ask it to put all of this into a script for us. We can go through this script that's proposing for us. I think it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and make a Git repository. I'm just gonna ask it to make a Git repository right here. And look at this, it's automatically created a Git ignore file for us with our Visual Studio based environment in mind. I also just wanna point out the fact that it explains everything that it's doing and you can even ask questions i just think this is so beneficial for beginners who are learning and to be honest even me if i'm in unfamiliar territory now of course you can get the same level of explanation if you just use like claude or chat gpt online but the fact that this is right here integrated within your environment and it can actually take action rather than just telling you things is just way more powerful. Now at this point, we might wanna connect our local repository to a remote such as GitHub so we can actually push our code. Again, something that I can just ask it to do or just find out more information about. Let's maybe try and run our program first to see if it actually even works. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask it how we should execute our script. And you can see that it seems to have added the need for us to specify the actual file that we wanna compile as a parameter into the PowerShell script. So for this example, we're don't really need that we're just trying to compile main.cpp so i'm going to ask it to modify that script to just compile main.cpp because that will make things easier with that change made i can now just run the compile script and then let's try running our program hello world there we go beautiful as a side note it's amazing how far we've come from the way the programmers used to write hello world programs you know by themselves anyway Let's just continue using Git here. So I'll just ask it to commit all of our files. You can see it suggests a commit message here for us automatically, which is great. And then I'm just gonna ask it to show me the log just to make sure that it is in fact committed. Now let's try something a little trickier that I don't always remember the exact syntax for, and that is adding a sub module. So we have this speed log, which is like a fast C++ logging library. Let's go ahead and just ask it to add that as a sub module. Now check this out. It's actually informed us that usually third party dependencies go into a folder such as third party or vendor. Again, an excellent suggestion. So let's go ahead and let it make that vendor folder for us. Okay, so now we've got speed log checked out as a sub module. Everything's going great. I'm gonna get it to do something that I would definitely struggle with doing off the top of my head. And that is setting up a CMake script to build all of this. I mean, I don't know if struggle is the right word, but it would definitely be annoying to have to set all this up. So let's ask it to make a CMake script for us to build this project instead of us just using cl.exe. And we'll also ask it to include speedlog in that script as well. Yes, complete with the spelling mistake. Now I'm no CMake expert, but this looks pretty, pretty good, pretty nice, pretty clean, pretty simple. Doesn't really sound like CMake, so I think we're in good hands. I'm gonna ask it now to generate some Visual Studio project files for us. Now it's gone ahead and decided to instead modify my main.cpp file to actually use speedlog which I mean, to be honest, it kind of read my mind. I was gonna get it to do that as well, just not at this stage. Anyway, in cases like this, you can see that it actually presents you with a diff of the changes to the file, and then you have to manually accept those changes. You have to apply them. So no worries if it gets your intention wrong. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna ask it to actually run CMake to generate a Visual Studio solution for me. And you can see this time it's gone ahead and done that. And look, it's even giving me some suggestions for next steps. Okay, so now let's navigate to the directory and I'm just gonna open up the Visual Studio solution and see if it compiles. Hmm, okay, not quite. That's okay, I'm just gonna go back to warp and just tell it that it doesn't compile. It suggested some fixes for us. I think they look pretty good. Let's go ahead and apply those changes and then we'll go back to Visual Studio and try and build it again. There we go, that's better. Now let's try and run our program and you can see it prints out Hello World using Speedlog, awesome. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is something that you could use potentially going forward? Do you think this is what the future looks like? Let me know in the comment section below. As I mentioned earlier, you can get started using Warp for free. Just go to warp.dev, link will be in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.